Hey there, I'm Mike Singer, and this is an overview of the Day of Silence. This is essentially a prototype for a non-linear choice-driven narrative. It's based on a story I've been working on for more than six years, and everything that happens in this prototype is mostly sourced from the first chapter of that story. Anyway, I want to run through the development process for this project a little bit and talk about my goals in using a non-linear format here. I think this medium has some pretty great potential, uh, and I did my best to dial into that with this. So I'd say I spent about five solid weeks writing out the original set of choice branches for the Day of Silence. And I had to flesh out certain characters more than I did in the original chapter, and also design a bunch of alternate storyline events. And just doing that probably took about 60% of the labor that went into this thing. Um, for comparison, the chapter I based this prototype on currently stands at about 15 pages in length. Um, it's in 12 point Times New Roman font with double spacing. So the nonlinear version of the same chapter now has more than 40 pages of text and I'm still writing. So that alone was about 40 hours of work. Uh, it amounted to more than 11,000 words, which is a little longer than the maximum length for most short stories. Um, basically, just understanding the effort that goes into a nonlinear narrative was a learning curve for me. Uh, but once I had all that done, initially I had to learn how to use Twine, which is a free software for nonlinear creators. Uh, but I gave myself way more time than I needed to do that. Um, it just turned out to be a nice, simple, well-designed program that really didn't take a whole lot of work to get the hang of. It would have been more complicated, I guess, if I'd added in pictures or music, but that's definitely a goal someday. I don't think, for the purposes of this prototype, that that was necessary. Um, I just wanted to get a non-linear version of this chapter onto Twine as a proof of concept. And it didn't have to be too fancy. I basically just wanted good text and choices. Uh, so when I realized how easy it was to get that, I actually went back to writing. Um, those first five weeks I spent developing choice branches gave me some good insight into building a compelling nonlinear narrative. And honestly, I felt like I hadn't really implemented what I learned from that process. Um, I had a minimum viable product done, but it wasn't quite what I'd imagined. So once I'd imported that first version of the Data Science into Twine, and the more I played through it, the more the choices just started feeling a little gimmicky and kind of superficial. Uh, certain options really offered shock value, uh, and maybe they were compelling because of that, but I think the flaw with my initial design was that I was writing laterally and not vertically. And what I mean by that is that I gave readers a lot of options from the get-go, and many of them were scary or shocking, but none of those options really provided a whole lot of different or unique insight about what was actually going on in the story. So as I was designing these initial shallow choice branches, I was starting to realize that one of the best aspects of nonlinear storytelling is that you can give the reader choices that convey different information or introduce different characters or even completely subvert the expectations that are established by a premise. But you can only do that if you execute those choices correctly at the right time in the story. And once I realized that Twine didn't take a whole lot of effort to figure out, I spent the last two weeks before this project's due date just reworking the best aspects of the first version of the story from a more vertical perspective. So, I do present less choices overall now, but the ones I do present I feel are more varied and disparate from each other than the original variables that I wrote out. Uh, rather than making it harder for the reader to pick options that kept certain characters alive or kept the story going, I made it so that each choice resulted in the distillation of one set of information over another. Essentially, I decided to make this prototype less like a survival game and more like a piece of interactive literature that required or requires a thorough reading in order to get a full understanding of all the events and characters involved. So I think this is a pretty solid minimum viable product and I think its current iteration definitely provides a better sample of my larger goals than the initial version did. If you're interested in testing it out, it lives online at this URL. I'm still adding to this baby bit by bit as time allows and just trying to flesh out some of the other major choice branches I want to investigate. If you do decide to try it, you may encounter some to be continued as I add more on, so consider yourself warned. But anyway, I really appreciate your interest and time and I hope you enjoy the experience.